Intro to Highway Transportation Engineering and this is module 3 in the series. We are now into part 3b. I am glad you made it to part 3b which is essentially a review of some of your surveying fundamentals. Before we dig deep into designing elements of vertical curves, a quick review of equal tangent parabola is in order. This ET parabola is essentially the vertical curve on highways. Why? Why review ET parabola? Well, to help ET phone home. The scientific consensus is that a parabolic disk antenna is better than the one ET built. First, what is a parabola? You may recall from your engineering drawing course, it's a geometric curve that results from slicing a cone like this. The beauty of the curve is that it provides constant rate of change of slope. The equation of parabola is y equals ax square plus bx plus c. You just know that. This is a parabola, this is a parabola, so is this one. It kind of resembles a star fleet badge in the making, isn't it? And this one too is a parabola. Let's look at some of the important properties of parabola. Here is parabola number 3 from previous screen. This curve is relatively flat compared to curves 1 and 2, which is the reason why I chose this intentionally. Let's call the beginning of the curve on the left as C, which is for point of curvature. Likewise, we will label the end of the curve to the right as T, which stands for point of tangency. Let's draw a tangent at C, which is this line, and a tangent at T, which is this line. Let's call the point where these two tangents intersect as I, which stands for point of intersect. Let's say the straight line length between T and C. Remember, straight line length between T and C. What I mean by straight line length is that you're not measuring along the curvature. You're measuring straight line length. That is L. This is the length of the curve. The equal tangent property of the curve states that the point I is exactly midway between point C and T and hence C to I will be the straight line length between C to I will be L2 and that is what equal tangent parabola is. And the equation of the curve is y equals ax square plus bx plus c. That is what does it mean? If this is your y axis and this is your x axis and this ordinate here from x to the point in curve is your y equals ax square plus bx plus c. And these are some mental notations of parabola. And let's see how they are related to vertical curves in highway alignment. In order to relate parabolic curves to vertical alignment, let's take this overly simplified case where the highway has to go over a hill which is represented by these two lines. In ascending, the grade is plus G1%. The descending grade is minus G2%, which you say negative because it's going downward. Remember, G1 and G2 are expressed in percent. What it means is a two feet rise for 100 horizontal would be plus 2%, and two feet fall for 100 feet horizontal would be minus 2%. That's how you should interpret it. If the road profile were to follow these two lines, it would literally make a sharp ridge at the top, isn't it? Nobody in the right mind would think that is the way to align a highway. So what shall we do? Enter parabola, equal tangent parabola that is. Its initial tangent will follow the upward slope G1 and its final tangent will follow the downward slope G2. Since this parabola is being used for vertical alignment, we will rename the points accordingly. So let's rename I as PVI, which stands for point of vertical intersection. Earlier it is just point of intersection. And rename C as PVC for point of vertical curvature. Rename T as PT, point of vertical tangency. The length of the road along the curve would still be L, which is the length of parabola, and the straight line length between PVC and PVI would then be L over 2, which essentially is preserving the equal tangent parabola's property. 
And that's how we translate properties of parabola into vertical alignment language. Now that you have seen the use of parabolic curves for vertical alignment, let's come to grips with the very purpose and the reason why we use parabolic curve in vertical alignment in the first place. First, it provides a transition between two grades. It provides a constant rate of change in grade given by this formula, which is the rate of change of grade R equals a modulus of the difference between the two grades divided by the length of the curve. That means that rate is going to be constant over the length of the curve, L. It has equal tangents property, which makes the computation less complicated, which means that the distance between PVC and PVI is going to be L over 2. And it can be used for both crest and sag vertical curves. What is a crest vertical curve? If it feels like a hump while you are driving, it is a crest vertical curve like this. If it feels like you are driving into a ditch, it is a sag vertical curve like this. The properties and behavior of both crest vertical curves and sag vertical curves are identical. We'll study more about crest vertical curves and sag vertical curves in their own parts, but first let's absorb some common notations and formulae. Here are some of the important notations which you should know as your second nature. Curve point naming is similar to horizontal curves with an addition of V for vertical right in the middle. For instance, in horizontal curves, PC is point of curvature. In vertical curves, it will be point of vertical curvature or PVC. Similarly, point of vertical inter intersection in horizontal curves, it will be point of intersection only. Point of vertical tangency. Stations, it is the same. Stations, uh, notations of stations we all know. It is, each station is a thousand meter or hundred feet. One station is 100 feet. So if you see 1258.15 feet, you will see the designation as 12 plus 58.5. That represents 12 stations and 58.5 feet. And here 12 is considered the full station with the, uh, only zeros after the plus sign. G1 is initial roadway grade, also referred to as initial tangent grade. G2 is final roadway grade, or it's also tangent grade. Initial tangent and tangent. A is the absolute value of the difference in grades, generally expressed in percent. If it is 2% plus, G1 is 2% plus, and G2 is minus 2. So the absolute value will be minus 2 minus 2, that is, will be 4, again in percent. L is the length of the vertical curve measured in a horizontal plane. In other words, it is a straight line distance, not along the curve. Straight line distance, not along the curve. Now we are going to derive some critical formulae based on the equation of parabola, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In here, y is roadway elevation at a distance x from PVC, and usually, c, the constant of parabola, is the elevation of PVC itself. And we already talked about this. Half the curve length is before PVI, and the other half is after PVI. That's just the property of parabola. If you take the first derivative of the equation of parabola, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, it will become dy by dx equals 2ax plus b. What is dy by dx? It is nothing but the slope of the curve at a given point. Now, let's take one given point, which is the beginning of the curve, origin of the curve, which is PVC, which is where we started, right? At the beginning of the curve, x is 0. So, if you have dy by dx equals 2ax plus b, b and x is 0, that automatically becomes dy by dx is b. And what is dy by dx? It's the slope of the tangent, which is nothing but g1, which is what we started with. And therefore, parameter of parabola b is equal to the initial tangent g1, or initial slope, you will, if you will. 
and it is in feet for feet or meter for meter as uh, we previously defined it is just a fraction so what it, what happens if you take the second derivative which is d square y by dx square that becomes 2a because dy by dx is 2ax plus b and when you take another derivative with respect to x that becomes 2a so by a simple observation this is nothing but average rate of ch slope or average rate of ch uh, change of grade which is nothing but g2 minus g1 over the length of the curve l so that is equal to 2a in other words the a value is going to be g2 minus g1 divided by 2l here you have to be very careful with the signs if g2 is negative you have to put negative value in there minus g2 minus g1 if g1 is positive and divided by 2l so once you do a few problems you will you will you will understand what i'm saying about the being careful with signs offsets is another important variable this is denoted by uppercase y and this is measured from the tangent initial tangent to the top of the curve the lowercase y if you remember it is measured from pvc level to the to the curve so uppercase y is from tangent to the curve top top of the curve and at middle point that is at pvi the value of uppercase ym y sub m is midpoint offset and at the end point of the curve at which is point of vertical tangency it is yf which is the final point y capital f sub y, sub f that is the end point offset using simple trigonometry you can derive all formulae for all these three offsets for design purposes the values are further simplified and the the so called k values are nothing less than a beauty the rate of change of grade at successive points you know is a constant amount for equal increments of horizontal distance we talked about this a little earlier and the algebraic difference between intersection intersecting tangent grades which is modulus of g2 minus g1 which we called earlier a and if you divide that by the length of the curve what is it going to give you it's going to give you rate of change of grade per unit length a over l in percent per feet in percent for feet a we, we mentioned is going to be in percent and it's going to be in percent for feet or meters if you are using a size system the algebraic difference is again modulus of g2 minus g1 and that is a value now you take the reciprocal of that which is l divided by l divided by a which is the horizontal distance required to affect a 1% change in gradient and it is therefore it is a measure of curvature and the quantity la is termed k l over a is termed k and it is a very important and a beautiful parameter which you will use all through the design process of uh, all through design of vertical curves you know why i call k values a beautiful variable the k value can be used directly to compute the high or low point for crest or sag vertical curves by using the equation x at high or low equals k times modulus of g1 where x is the distance from pvc to the higher low point and now you might think is high point the same as the midpoint it will be only if g2 and g g1 are of the same magnitude with up or down but if g1 g2 have different values the midpoint may not be the same as the higher low point again listen to it carefully i i have not put that on the slide intentionally midpoint is not the same as higher low 
midpoint of the curve not necessarily the same once again the midpoint of the curve is not necessarily the same as higher low point on the curve so the k values are important again for application in design of vertical curve here is a summary of all the relationships we talked about you have to keep that in mind and again no need to memorize them sorry about the phone just ignore that keep all these formulae handy and keep all the principles in your mind and next we are going to talk about crest vertical curves elements of design voila that ends equal tangent parabola part 3b